After the Battle of Badr, the number of Muslims gradually increased and it became known to everyone that an Islamic state was established on the territory of Arabia. The Prophet taught Muslims about the martyrdom. He heralded to Muslims that martyrdom in the way of Allah is the highest authority after prophethood, that all sins of the martyr are forgiven except for the rights of servants and that the suffering of death of a martyr will be as much as the bite of an ant. This was a great blessing from Allah to the believers. Every Muslim longed to be a martyr in the cause of Allah. In Mecca there was a great atmosphere of mourning. Almost everyone in Mecca lost a relative in the Battle of Badr. The polytheists of Mecca were filled with the grudge of avenging Badr. As a result, not long after, the surrounding Arabs were asked for help and an army of 3000 polytheists with their hearts on fire of revenge was prepared. Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet, who was in Mecca at the time, wrote the preparation made in Mecca in a letter and sent it to Medina to warn the Muslims. The Messenger of Allah immediately convened the war council. He consulted with his companions whether to stay in Medina and wage a defensive war or whether to go out of the city and conduct an offensive war. Although the Prophet was in favor of staying in Medina and making a war of defense, in the end it was decided to go out of the city and conduct an offensive war in accordance with the decision of the majority. The Prophet brought his army to Mount Uhud, a red mountain one mile north of Medina. The Prophet had given the banner to Musab bin Umair, the cavalry command to Zubair bin Awam and the army command to Hazrat Hamza. Fifty archers, who were good marksmen, were placed on the hill of Ainain under the command of Abdullah ibn Jubair. Allah's Messenger intended this to prevent a possible attack from behind the lines. He gave the following precise order to the archers. You are going to keep our backs, whether the enemy is victorious or defeated. Never leave your places unless you hear from me. The polytheists of the Quraysh also came to the battlefield and lined up their army. The right flank of the army was commanded by Khalid bin Walid. On the left flank was placed Abu Jahil's son Ikrima and the cavalry was headed by Safwan bin Umayyah. The commander of the general headquarters was Abu Sufyan and the reserve commander was Amr bin As. The Prophet wasallam addressed his army and said, O oh people, undoubtedly jihad is difficult to commit. The trouble of war is tough. There are few people who are patient with the jihad, except those whom Allah has led to the right path. There is no doubt that Allah is with those who obey him. Do not depart from what Allah has commanded you. Know that controversy, argument and discouragement are things that Allah doesn't like because of weakness. Those who are in the situation are not given victory. The situation of the believer according to the believer is similar to the situation of the head according to the body. When the head is disturbed, the whole corpse is disturbed by it. Wassalamu alaikum.
Since the polytheists were hurting so much in Badr, they rushed to the army of Islam with hatred and the desire to take revenge as soon as possible. The Islamic army was waiting for the Prophet's order to attack. When the Prophet brought Takbir with his unique voice, the companions attacked by saying Allah Allah in unison. The polytheistic army, superior in numbers and equipment, could no longer bear the Muslims fighting with unprecedented fervor and began to retreat en masse. After chasing the enemy for a while and making sure of their victory, the Muslims set out to collect beauty. The archers who saw this victory from the hill of archers left their places and rushed to collect beauty, despite the warning of the Messenger of Allah. Abdullah bin Jubayr couldn't keep them in their places despite his insistent warning. Only eight people remained on the hill who remained loyal to the order of Prophet Muhammad. Whatever happened, happened after that. Khalid bin Walid, one of the enemy's vigilant commanders, had his eye on the archers. When he saw the archers leave their positions, he seized the opportunity he had been waiting for. With the cavalry unit under his command, they immediately went around behind the hill where the archers were located and launched a fierce attack from behind the Muslims who were collecting booty. When the enemy soldiers who had been defeated and were fleeing saw the situation, they immediately turned back and attacked the Muslims again. The Islamic army was caught between two fires. At this moment, Hazrat Hamza radiallahu an, the valiant warrior of Islam, who was running from side to side among the ranks, was martyred by a spear thrown by a slave named Wahshi. Wahshi, who was a slave, did this in order to attain the freedom promised to him by Abu Sufyan's wife, Hind. The martyrdom of Hazrat Hamza caused an atmosphere of mourning in the Muslim ranks. The already mixed ranks have deteriorated. The polytheists martyred many of the Muslims that day. A group of polytheists even attacked the Messenger of Allah directly. The believers jumped in front of the arrows, fired at the Prophet and shielded his body to protect him. In the meantime, Utba, one of the polytheists, threw a large stone at the Prophet. This stone hit the Prophet in the face. 
the Prophet's helmet split his cheek and broke a tooth. At that moment, the earth and the sky trembled. In the meantime, the Prophet fell into one of the pits that Abu Amir, a wicked person, had dug for the Muslims. At that time, the polytheists thought that the Prophet was dead and made the fuss that Muhammad had been killed. The polytheists were overwhelmed by their joy. Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Talha radiallahu anhum brought him out of the pit. Then the Prophet said, Allah is so wrathful to the people who endured the face of his messenger. When the companions began to shout, the messenger of Allah is alive, the companions ran to him and built a wall of flesh around him. The joys of the polytheists who heard this disappeared and they headed in that direction. They started raining arrows on the messenger of Allah. These arrows hit the companions, some were wounded and some were martyred. Saad bin Abi Wakkas was killing the polytheist who approached with arrows. The Prophet gave an arrow to him and said, Shoot, O Saad, shoot. May my parents be sacrificed to you. The Islamic army began to retreat towards Mount Uhud. The Messenger of Allah said, O servants of Allah, come to me, I am the Messenger of Allah. Allah Ta'ala declares this situation as follows. While you were killing your enemies by Allah's leave, Allah fulfilled his promise to you. Finally, there came a moment when you fell into weakness after Allah showed you what you desire. You tried to argue about the order and you became rebellious. There were those who wanted the world and there were those who wanted the hereafter. Thereafter Allah turned you away from them in order to test you. And he has forgiven you. In fact, Allah is very gracious to believers. On that terrible day, despite everything, the Messenger of Allah never left his place like a pole star and resisted with great skill. With his courage and perseverance, he set a superior example to his companions in courage because the Almighty said, And be not infirm, and be not grieving, and you shall have the upper hand if you are believers. If a wound has afflicted you, it has also afflicted the people. And we bring these days to men by turns, and that Allah may know those who believe and take witnesses from among you, and Allah doesn't love the unjust. The polytheists were now becoming ineffective against the Muslims. In this fearful moment, Allah Ta'ala blessed the believers with a state of sleep, and they fell into a sweet and peaceful sleep where they were. The polytheists were frightened and began to return. One of the miracles given to the Prophet was that he instilled fear in the hearts of the enemy even from a distance. With the effect of this fear that fell on their hearts, the polytheists couldn't attempt to invade Medina, which was completely defenseless, despite the temporary victory they provided against the Muslims. Moreover, they returned without taking a single prisoner from the Muslims. Without a doubt, this was a blessing from Allah to his Prophet and the believers. On that day, 70 companions were murdered in Uhud. Among them were such braves as Hazrat Hamza and Musab bin Umair. The believers descended on the battlefield, buried the martyrs and offered funeral prayers. 
The companions who didn't pay attention to the instructions of Prophet Muhammad and descended from the archer's hill for beauty were very sad about the responsibility of defeat. The Prophet addressed them. Don't be sorry, you are forgiven. The conquest of Mecca is also imminent. In Uhud, on the one hand, and a great ecstasy of faith, patience, trust, submission and consent to fate were displayed at the peak level. On the other hand, very painful tests were also faced, due to weaknesses such as a momentary ignorance and inclination to the world. The negligence shown in carrying out the command of Allah's Messenger changed the course of the war in an instant and caused the victory to be delayed. The mistakes of a few people resulted in everyone getting into trouble. The polytheists were given a deceptive victory that would have no practical consequences. With this deceptive victory, the hatred and anger that had accumulated in the hearts of the polytheists since Badr had calmed down, and their violence and coldness towards Islam had decreased over time. And be not infirm, and be not grieving, and you shall have the upper hand if you are believers. Allah